Now this is a very, very, very weird airplane. So weird in fact that the manufacturer of Beechcraft called it the Starship. Because at the time, I mean, let me say this was designed 50 years ago, it was very much of a Starship looking airplane. Yes, everybody, the Beechcraft Starship, sort of a failure of an airplane. Only 53 of these were built, mainly because it was so strange. As you can see, this plane is designed unlike any other. It has a canard structure meaning that we obviously have this big wing in front which maybe makes it look a little bit like um an insect now how this works is right now i am controlling the elevators that the front wing kind of replaces the horizontal stabilizer you'd normally have in the tail section of the aircraft we also can see this plane has huge winglets <laughs> kind of weird looking but obviously that's because they replaced the vertical stabilizer that you'd also find on the tail as you can see if i move the rudder the rudder moves on both sides these two wings stabilize the yaw of the plane indeed now, other than that this plane is strange that it has a pusher propeller set up like this, but doesn't it look quite cool indeed? And let me tell you, this plane, I think, was extremely underrated. Why? Because I love these canard type airplanes. They fly quite a bit differently to conventional planes. One thing that is quite special is that they just don't really stall. Oh. This plane was one of the first planes to feature a composite of carbon fiber, mostly. Something you'd maybe find on a modern 787 airliner. Whereas at the time, most planes were just made out of metal very special indeed it's the same that i haven't ever seen this plane in real life but i've seen it now in the microsoft flight sim because just flight not long ago came up with an extremely amazing add-on one of the most realistic add-ons you can buy for a price of 45 euros we're gonna see how crazy the simulation really is some markets sent me a model to review check it out in the video description Anyway, let's check out this incredible private jet in the inside now. As you can see, we have a very private jet looking cabin. This sure looks very, you know, normal. One thing that you can definitely tell though is the lack of the wing when you look outside because it's all the way far in the back. Here's a little lavatory right here. Toilet not to be occupied for takeoff and landing. Doesn't really look very bathroomy here. And we can pull up like a door for storage where we can, when we press on this, yes, remove the wheel chocks from the outside so we can start moving. Let's uh, close this again. Close, close. But where it gets very interesting is in the cockpit. As you can see, this was an extremely modern cockpit for the time because it mainly features screens. Now, they weren't very good. They were CRT screens and they kind of suck. But let's go ahead and try this turn on this plane now. That's a lot of switches here. And the interesting thing is all of them work, which can be a little bit intimidating let's go ahead and uh, turn on the battery switch right here which should turn on the plane uh, maybe turn on the power for the avionics yep as you can see a screen turns on right here uh arm the ignition of the engines i really have no idea what i'm doing let's go ahead and close this door yeah like that very nice okay not bad we have just locked it i wonder now can i turn on the ignition starter okay it's it's doing something. It's making something work. As you can see, we've got N1 compressor. Yes, looking good. Oh, yeah, it's starting to spin. The pusher propeller. Yes, look at that. That's good. Let's go ahead and put the fuel to start. Yep, and that should make it spin very nicely. Okay, good, good, good. Let's put the engine to run. Yes, let's turn on the left engine of our starship right now. Yep, put that to start. Wonderful. Oh, oh, that, oh, that goes high temp. Oh my God, our engine is overheating. That is a thousand degrees of temperature. We've just kind of fried the engine a little bit. Uh, wonderful. Put the engine to on. And we can now turn on the left and right generator. Look at that. Oh, oh. What in the world is going on with electrics? Hello? Uh, it's like a... What in the world? Uh, 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 I can't really get those instruments to turn on. We might just want to actually just use our tablet right here. And this is where it gets really interesting. We can set up different weights for each passenger. Very nice. And we can see how the left engine is doing. We can see how the right engine is doing. Engine condition is a little bit worn from our poor startup. We can also see how the electrics are doing. And we can see that it's kind of... I don't even know what's wrong. This is like a little weird. Maybe because the ignition is start on? Uh. Oh, oh yeah, it is. Oh, okay. I found it out using this. The uh, the ignition was still on. This is why this sim wasn't working. As you can see, these screens are nicely turning on now. I'm a genius. This is what the cabin looks like. See, this is 
extremely cool because it shows us what it simulates. We see the oxygen system, the avionics base, how air is being blown like a PC into the avionics to cool them down, defrosters, you know, hot air, the cabin altitude, and even failures. We might want to see what that looks like later. Talking about such funny little things, something we could do is get out the armrest, which shows our circuit breakers. And ladies and gentlemen, they work. So for example, we can trip the sensors for the engine data. So for example, let's just deactivate that. And as you can see, this is realistic. Our engines are technically turned off, even though they definitely aren't. Really interesting to see. Now let's go ahead and put them back into place. Come on, put that back into place. Good, good, good. And as you can see, we've got engine data back. On the co-pilot sides, we have even more things. Like for example, we can, for example, turn off some screens, MFD. Look, and that's turned on the MFD and the radar. This is really, really cool to have. Let's go ahead and put this back. Yes, this is extremely nice for an airplane that we will never get to fly as pilots in real life. Let's go and put on a radar right here, which would show other planes and weather maybe. For navigation, we'd use the Okigami okay down here, which sucks. I hate to use that. Uh, maybe do an avionics upgrade there. Anyway, time to finally see what it's like to fly a special plane like this. Let's go and put the reversers on. Of course, this turboprop has reversers. And this plane is relatively powerful. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wonderful. And we're ready to go. Looking great. Let's turn on some of the lights right here. Wonderful. Turtle, I want this thing to be a Christmas tree from the outside. Yes, that's as you can see working. Got some taxi lights right here. Wonderful. Now imagine seeing this plane here just taxing to the runway. Isn't that a crazy sight? Let's go ahead and take it off now. Full power and the pusher props. But one thing I can kind of tell is that I, I was just talking about power, right? This plane doesn't really have a lot of power and this is like a big problem this plane wasn't actually super fast it didn't really deliver the power that it needed to compete with planes of the pride let's go ahead and put the landing gear up you know in terms of speed if we for example look at a plane that's relatively similar to this one the piaggio avanti that one is actually fast the starship though wasn't really fast but something i want to show you comes up now let's go ahead and reduce the throttle to idle because i want to stall out the plane and see what it's like see with this this canard plane, it's extremely important to simulate physics properly. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we slow down this very weird airplane. 100 knots right there. We're about to stall and see what happens now. I'm going to keep the nose here at 10 degrees. And as you can see, instead of banking over to stall, it the nose just tips down. This plane doesn't really have usual stall problems of just, you know, tipping out of the sky and falling and losing lift like that. Why? Because the canards in front are the first wings to stall out, which makes the nose drop, which automatically prevents a stall on the main wing. That's kind of the simple way to, I think, explain it. This makes an extremely nice. I mean, planes crashes don't really happen a lot because of stalls anymore, but this plane just doesn't stall out. I mean, just try again. So here we go. Reducing speed. We've got a stall warning. Doesn't matter. All the nose does is go down like that. And that automatically recovers itself. This plane is extremely nice to fly. We've got great stability. We've got great control. Let's go ahead and uh, climb a little bit. So the thing I find interesting is that this plane, by the way, only has one flap setting, I think. And that is flaps 15, which is very unusual. Yeah, it slightly brings down the trailing edge of the wing, but not very much. And I think that makes this plane very interesting for landing at small smaller airport runway C. If we compare this plane to like a Beechcraft King Air, that's a plane that can fly literally anywhere. But here we had quite a bit of trouble taking off, to be honest. And now we're stalling out again. No problem, because all we do is tip the nose down automatically. Very nice. See, that's like a kind of a problem. This plane isn't much bigger than the PC-12 that hasn't got, even though it only has one turboprop engine. This one has two of them. Um, I think it's going to actually not be able to take off from St. Barth. I'm not kidding. Let's try to give in full power into this plane. All right, and see how it moves. I was a little bit shocked by how poorly this plane flew, to be honest. But let's see, I might be mistaken there. Come on, we're now speeding up and we need a, like 100 knots to fly. We're not using flaps, but let's see. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, 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 we might be okay. Okay, there you go. We are okay. Wonderful. I mean, earlier on, we were in the Alpine Mountains, and that gets very troublesome because it was very high altitude where there's not a lot of oxygen. But this is okay. 
Let's see how this airplane, I guess, lands now. So let's go ahead and put the flaps down to the whole 15 degrees we've got available. Let's maybe touch her down smoothly at St. Barth's. Once again, hmm, in real life, no chance. All right, here we go. Coming up, runway 28. Come on, do it. Oh, we stalled out. We stalled out. And then, <laughs> that's interesting. Because we stalled out, the nose tipped down and that can be actually a bit of a challenge with these countered planes i forgot about that you can't just stall this plane onto the runway because it will tip over oh interesting learning right there it does look pretty it looks like an insect by the way i kind of want to do another altitude test right here come on after all this plane is over 100 kilometers per hour slower than the piaggio avanti quite a big difference let's maybe see the power here up in these mountains of lucla come on you can Maybe do it. I'm not sure. Uh, not really. And so if we enter the air now, the nose will probably tip down quite a lot. Ah, we've kind of done it. You know what? It's funny because we see the wing right in front of us of this plane. Let's go ahead and put the flaps down. And we see what an engine fire looks like. All right. Engine fire is right there, as you can tell. Let's see. Engine should be on fire. Though it has no fire animations from the outside. It's kind of nice if we have these failures very easily accessible to, you know, do training for an airplane that doesn't really exist anymore. Only six of these starships are flying around today. All right, let's try to land her a bit smoothlier now. And this time we need a little bit of airspeed just to not stall out in front of the run. Whoa, 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 let's not stall out because you're gonna tip down. Okay, kind of like that. You need a lot of speed here. Okay, that's been a very late landing. Let's see if we can stop. So full power into the reverse thrust. Yes, we've stopped. No problem, as you can definitely tell. So, buddy, now you know what a can out of plane is. This plane uh, kind of tried to reinvent the wheel a little bit too much by making a completely new airplane design and making us rethink what an airplane is supposed to look like while not actually really giving us any proper advantages that make you want to invest in this plane and the larger cost. This is why no other canards are really flying around. Because this plane wasn't any faster, any higher, or any longer range, or any more performanty than any other other plane. So why would you take it instead of look, the looks and maybe how it flies? What a shame. Maybe we should make a canard airliner design. Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishitetsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.